Junction Arts are a small charity-based arts organisation based in Chesterfield, Derbyshire, who in 2016 celebrated 40 years of delivering high-quality arts projects to communities throughout the region. Balls Over Lantern Parade is one of those projects. The Balls Over Lantern Parade is a massive um, event for Junction Arts. It's one of our most important events through the year and definitely one of our largest. It coincides with the Bolsover Christmas Festival, which takes place during the day, and then the Bolsover Lantern Parade happens in the evening. The Lantern Parade will happen from about five o'clock onwards. People will be gathering with their lanterns from four o'clock onwards, and then the parade will come round the town and end up near the Christmas tree, where people will gather and sing carols to the Whitwell Brass Band. We were asked what, four years ago by Junction Arts to lead the Lantern Parade and we've proudly done that now and Father Christmas will be on the sleigh at the front of the Lantern Parade. It's a special treat it does for Rotary in Bolsover. And it's here in the beautiful grounds of Bolsover Castle where in just a few hours' time the Lantern Parade will begin its journey. But where did the idea to hold a Lantern Parade in Bolsover come from? I'd become director of Junction Arts and I... I think I'd only been there about a year and I had been to Welfare State International up in Ulverston and I knew that they did a fantastic lantern parade. But they did that all in white lanterns and I thought that the community of Bolsover district would like uh, um, something different and so I just went for uh, the idea that we would pull together a load of volunteers. We had a great relationship with Bolsover Castle, with English Heritage, mm -hmm. and I came up with the idea. And um, I had to present it to the town council, I can remember, and I took along a sample lantern. We did it that year, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people came. <laughs> For many, the Lantern Parade starts right here. Well, we have um, six days of uh, community workshops at the Bolsover Community Centre and families can come in with their ideas of what they'd like to make as a lantern. And it can be absolutely anything from a Minecraft character to a giant Olaf. And very quickly you've got to be able to think, right, how am I going to transform that toy into a giant lantern? Everybody seems to have a lot of fun making their lanterns, and I think that's why it's so popular. This is the Chinook, and my two boys that are three and five, um, over the summer, have seen this particular helicopter come over the house, and they asked if I could make it into a lantern. So I'm going to have a piece of string hanging from this part, little army men hanging out the back, and this will be lit up on the night. I mean, that's the great thing about the Lantern Parade, is that you can sort of let your imagination run wild and, and create something uh, that looks really impressive. I, th I think it does bring out the child in you, really. Um, we, we see that with parents that come along with their children, um, and they tend to um, enjoy it just as much and take a great deal of pride in what's produced at the end of it as well. And Junction Arts have a team of dedicated volunteers to lend a helping hand. So I love it. I love being in the community and doing stuff. And there's all the people with all the talents here. And I can't do that. I'm not an artist. But I can do stuff like make the tea, sweep the floor, all the little jobs that need doing just the same. There you go. The lantern parades become a tradition in some families. Yeah, we started probably about 10, 12 years ago. Started off with little things. Uh, and as the years have gone by, we've progressed to big things and we have to attend the full three weekends to get it finished. Uh, but kid, I mean, even though the kids aren't kids anymore, they still like to come up and do it. I did, I did ask them if they still wanted to do it at 18 and they said, yeah. It's getting the community together, doing things that you probably wouldn't do as a family. There was a family who come to the event every year and the family effort was the Thunderbird 3. I met that family when they were making that particular lantern in the workshop. For me, seeing the whole family get together, grandparents, parents and children, it was just a really wonderful introduction 
for me about you know what's important about the Bolso for the Lantern Parade. With a pantomime theme, the church is holding its annual Scarecrow Festival on the day of the Lantern Parade. And since being made at the workshops, Cinderella's lantern coach has been waiting for the big day. Now it's finally arrived, are they going to make it to the Lantern Parade? Oh, oh yes, yes, we are! are. <laughs> <laughs> the fun of dressing up's also been a part of the Lantern Parade. One of the early years, the Rotary Club um, started a Victorian festival. And so we all dressed up, which was rather wonderful. And so lots of people did dress up. And there was a Victorian market on the day. I can remember going out round jumble sales and charity shops and buying trousers to cut down and caps and shirts. and. So we'd just throw those in and then people would dress up or bring their own kit. And it's not only the Lantern Parade where Junction Arts has a history in the town. They sponsored the making of this wonderful tapestry in 1994, the same year they started the Lantern Parade. More recently, the new WI has created a community collage, featuring the Lantern Parade as the town's winter festival. Amidst the detail on the 1994 tapestry is the pit wheel of the former balls of a colliery, where lanterns not only provided light, but were an essential piece of mining safety equipment. Wendy Stevenson's decided to make this the theme of her very first lantern making project. I've based the, the lamp on my father's real working miner's lamp. He was given it as a retirement present from uh, balls of a colliery. So, um, it's, it's partly about honouring the memory of my dad, but also, I suppose, evoking memories for people in the community. Light through history is the theme of a special lantern Rachel's designed for schools. What I've done is looked at lots of different sources, from railway lamps to miners' lamps, gas lights, to the uh, candle holders they would have used in the castle and mix them all together and once they've made their structure we cover all the sides in tissue paper and all the base and then they get to make all the decoration they get to make the little flames for each of the four sides the coloured band and then the cone top to finish it off In around two hours many children will begin to arrive carrying their unique lanterns Let's hope the weather stays clear. In 1997, it was very, very misty. And there was something really glorious about seeing those candlelit lanterns appearing out of the gloom. And they were, they were really lovely. It was cold and it was misty and it was foggy, but it was magic. And on this clear and bright day, Junction Arts are bringing even more light to the event. One of the things we have tried to do is bring arts activities to um, additional arts to the event year on year. So this year, for instance, we have something very special, um, which is an interactive musical installation um, by Michael Davis, who's actually um, been part of the Samba Band for a number of years. So it's really nice that he was successful in an Arts Council bid to bring his sort of vision um, to Bolsover. And Junction Arts have another musical treat in store. It's a surprise, I can give the name away, it's called Valiance Arise and it was composed by Paul Lovett Cooper and it's been played for the first time this evening by the Whitwell Brass Band and the Samba Band. And with the sun beginning to fade, it's time for the all-important safety talk. One of the things we need to think about is um, how we're going to make sure that the parade is a safe event. We have a security team who we work with every year and they come in and they look after the road closures. We also have stewards um, at the actual event which is a mixture of volunteers. We work with Brimington Air Cadets and also staff um, to look after the castle site. 
councillors Pat and Paul Cooper are here to judge the lantern competition. And the lanterns are beginning to arrive. But how do you get to the parade if you've made a lantern the size of a submarine? I knew it was too big to walk up the hill with it or to bake it up in the assembly room. So I made it as a wireframe. And then I contacted uh, Junction Arts to see how I could get the tissue paper. And they advised me what to do and how to do it. It's 50 years since Yellow Submarine was released as a, a record. So I thought, let's try and make the Yellow Submarine. This is a Blue Meanie. The Blue Meanies went into Pepperland and killed all the music and the Beatles had to go in there and uh, get rid of them, bring the harmony and the music back to the people. This was my first attempt. I thought, well, I'll make a, a flathead. But uh, he wasn't so good, so I got rid of him. And uh, this is the second generation Blue Meanie. <laughs> and with a little help from his friends, Neil's yellow submarine and Blue Meanies are on their way. And it's time to light up. Look, we did have prizes for the best lanterns, and I know that the judges found it really difficult to choose. Um, and in particular, the schools, they couldn't identify the best school. It was everyone took part, and all the schools, I think, were joint winners. As five o'clock approaches, the excitement builds. The lantern parade is about to begin. The parade itself is fantastic, it involves the community, it's a great community event um, and it's really embedded locally as well which is, which is absolutely brilliant. We get really high numbers, people really sort of have a special place in their heart for it and that is all fantastic and what we want to do is just build on that enthusiasm and add more additional elements year on year. <laughs> It's a real celebration, I think, for Bolsover. Um, what's great about Bolsover, what a great community, um, what a really special place with an amazing history. And for Junction Arts, I think it's just wonderful to have been involved in this for over 20 years now. Having the role of looking after the Lantern Parade for 2017 is something that I'm really excited about and I really want to make sure that it um, continues in the way that it has been and you know just to make sure that it you know it represents the community that it's based within and it celebrates that fact. You see, the Lantern Parade is about magic. That's entirely what it's about. It's about making something with schools or individuals or families. You make something, then you take it out. And then it's magic because you walk it. 
It's the combination of it being dark, it's the combination of light and music bringing that into the town, and it's the combination of people. It was magic. It was the highlight of my year.